legend with week one beginning tonight. Bart will give us three things he cannot oh, yeah. wait to see. I'll tell you what, Green, I'm excited. Football is finally back. But the first thing I can't wait for is this game tonight. Can the Cowboys shock the world? Greeny, I think they win. I think they win an Emmy for most supporting cast and a drama. They got no shot of winning tonight. And I tell you, there's very few things in life that are 100%. But you can write this down, take a picture. I don't give a unk to, to really quote the great Chris Tucker. But I tell you what, I can't wait to see this game tonight because football is back. Number two, I can't wait for the Greeny Bowl. Yes, the tell of his two sons. Are you going to have the split jersey, Greeny? Yeah. Are you going to have Zach Wilson on one side, <laughs> Sam Darnold on the other? I tell you what, this is going to be a great game of two young quarterbacks. That, listen, a lot of drama in week one. Who thought that Carolina and the Jets would be in a meaningful game? But this is going to be a meaningful game for me and you, Greeny, to see if Sam Darnold is as bad as he's been here or was it all the Jets' fault? And finally, finally, my last take, Greeny, and what I can't wait for is can the Cleveland Browns live up to the hype? Will Baker Mayfield have more wins than commercials? I don't know. We've seen this movie before. I've seen this movie before, being in the SEC East the majority of my career. Can Baker Mayfield lead a team that has high expectations? I don't think so. Guess what, Greeny? The Cleveland Browns don't make the playoffs. Yeah, clip this clip. I said it, two tears in a bucket. Wow. Uh, let me bring the rest of the crew in on that because that is quite – that is a hot take. I mean, that, that candidly, that is a scolding yes, take for a Cleveland yes, Browns yes. Don't, don't, don't catch on fire, D-Wood. Don't stand too close. Go ahead. Lewis seems fired up. What do you think? <laughs> Bart, 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 you came out firing today, bro. No question about it. Look, I, I agree with you on the Dallas Cowboy game and all that other stuff, but the, Brown, the Browns making the playoffs now. The Browns making the playoffs. They're one of the wild card teams, if not the division winner. It's going to be between them and Baltimore in the north. Uh, look, I, I just think Baker Mayfield right now has find, found his groove. I think he's found the perfect fit. I think him and Kevin Stefanski hit on something last year, and you saw they took Kansas City down to the wire in the playoffs. I think now it's about AFC title game and or Super Bowl or bust for this team. They have one of the best offensive lines in football. They have one of the best running back tandems in football. They have plenty of weapons on the perimeter, and OBJ looks motivated as ever, healthy as Lewis. ever. And on defense, you know they've got horses on defense, Bart. But, Lewis, never listen, respect. Lamar Jackson got off the respect. porter potty and beat them last year. <laughs> hey, little man, get off the porter potty. He hey. still had wet wipes. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Bart. I was standing there watching him. I watched him come running out of the tunnel. I watched him come running out of the tunnel. You know, he, he's a different kind of dude. There's no doubt about he's that. He's still there. He's a different kind of dude. That's why I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be between Baltimore and Cleveland in the north. I think, But I think one of those teams, will, obviously, one of them wins the division. The other one is going to be a wild card. Let me bring Damian Woody in here to, to, to get in the middle of all of this. What do you think? Brown's not making the playoffs, says your buddy Bart You just Scott. said you love the Steelers. You said you love the Steelers. You love the Steelers, D. Wood. Bartholomew. <laughs> my, my guy. Put the my, out there. My, my, we going to be better than that. I, I had to go Bartholomew <laughs> on this one. I mean. That's how my grandma called me when, she, when, I, when I did something wrong. I mean, really? We, we The Browns? I mean, I, listen. Ahead, I know the Browns. The Browns. I, I understand the Browns don't have this, this impeccable history or whatever. But come on now. We, I mean, after last year. So you, after last year, you don't think do, they do make you, a step up? Baltimore in? Do I have Baltimore in? Yeah. No. Nah. Oh, now that's disrespectful. You gonna pick <laughs> Baker Mayfield, Mr. Progressive, over Action Jackson? Here's what I would say, Bart. I will take it a step farther. I think if you took the names off the fronts of the jerseys and just looked at the names on the backs of the jerseys, yeah. the Cleveland Browns have the best players of any yeah. team in so the entire the dream, So did the Dream Team. What did that get them? You're talking about the Eagles Dream Team, yeah, obviously, yeah. not the 92 basketball they, they, they team. Were, yeah, it doesn't were, always work. Hey, easy, easy now. Oh, I'm just taking hey, shots at everybody what? today. Hey, I can't load it. So you're <laughs> so I just want to make sure we have all this on the record because we will keep these tapes. So in the AFC North, the two teams that people generally tend to love, Bart has the Ravens in and the Browns and out, and the and Damian Woody has the Browns in and the Ravens out. <laughs> 
That's correct. Okay, I like that. Put me that. down. We are we're putting together all kinds of bold predictions today. Speaking of which, I've asked each of you <laughs> to plan one for today. And D, what you are first up? Give me a bold prediction as the NFL season starts tonight. Man, I, listen, I'm riding on this Los Angeles Chargers hype train. They so are they in the, the they, yeah, yes, they so are they in the playoffs. Playoff. They are in the playoffs, and they're gonna win a game in the playoffs. Mm. That's what I have for the Los Angeles Chargers. I'm all in on Justin Herbert. They addressed the offensive a line and that bad man Derwin James is back mm -hmm. watch that boy I'm telling you right now that boy might come out here and win Deep. defensive player of the year I agree with you listen I'm with you when you're right you just it is meant to be from the seaport brought to you by Chase with an entire complement of football analysts on the day the season begins roll it Cindy let's do it time to get up with the best day of the year we're kicking off the NFL season with Tampa Tom's team in search of the only thing he hasn't done in his entire career can he do it they're facing Dak and Dallas and the demolition being predicted just about everywhere we'll tell you exactly how the Cowboys could pull off the upset and don't miss Eli live on his old team his new job and that one night when he changed football history forever all that and more in this hour of get up as we are just under 12 hours away from the kickoff tonight Tom Brady enters 14 and 4 in his career in season openers most wins by a quarterback in the Super Bowl era Dallas meanwhile has dropped two of their last three season openers, but they will have the return of Dak Prescott, his first regular season game since week five of last season. Dak was leading the league in passing yards at the time of his injury, and our football power index loves Tampa tonight. A 70% chance to win. It's worth noting that the reigning Super Bowl champs have won six of the last seven of these season openers on these Thursday nights. So everything is sort of lined up against the Cowboys. And maybe worst of all, they appear to be missing one of their most, if not their most important player. For those just joining us here, Shefty, catch us up on the latest on Zach Martin. Zach Martin did not travel from Dallas to Tampa on the team plane yesterday. And despite the fact that he wasn't listed on the injury report, you don't list players on the COVID-19 list on the injury report. So you wouldn't see him there necessarily. But everyone who was on that Cowboys team plane saw that Zach Martin did not make the trip. Now, Mike McCarthy, the Dallas Cowboys head coach, <coughs> said if anybody could come back, pass the test, travel to Tampa separately and get on the football field, it would be Zach Martin, arguably the most valuable player on their offense. But the fact of the matter is nobody's counting on having him tonight. We have to operate under the assumption that he will not be out there. It would be a big surprise if he were. So Zach Martin looks like he's out tonight against Tampa. And so just add that to the list of all of the challenges that Dak Prescott faces in his return. Again, he hasn't taken a hit in a game since last yeah. October. He wasn't able to throw much during the preseason because of the shoulder. He didn't play in any preseason games, and now he's missing Zach Martin. So, Bart, let's give the fans stuff to watch for yeah. tonight. What do you expect Tampa's defense to be doing against Dak Prescott considering all of that? Well, I expect, I expect their defense to put it in the hands of Dak Prescott, right? Because before this was be an Ezekiel Elliott play-action game, bring him back slowly. But now, you know, they're going to load the box. They're going to press their, their receivers. They're going to take away all the short stuff. Because, one, I have a quarterback that has compromised both, you know, upper body and lower body. I'm going to make him a runner. I'm going to play him like a stationary target, like a, like an immobile quarterback, and dare him to run and tell my linebackers, tell my corners, if he gets out of the pocket, tackle him low. I know it is. Listen, that's, that's gruesome, right? He's a guy coming off an injury. But I'm telling him to hit him low because I want to mess with his psyche and see if he's going to be scared to step into his throws and scared to go out and be a mobile quarterback, which we know he all he is. <clears throat> and so then on the other side of that, because I have in your notes here, D, what the game plan for the Cowboys should be to run the football, which would neutralize that pass rush, which would scare you. Can you do that? If, they, if Tampa <clears throat> comes out and does defensively what, da, what uh, Bart is talking about, can the Cowboys and Zeke Elliott get it going tonight? Well, it's, it's a lot harder when you don't have arguably your best player. And uh, what, I was, what I mean by running the football is staying ahead of the down and distance. Mm. The last thing you want to do against a Todd Bowles-led defense is get behind the chains where he can unleash all those different blitzes that he loves to do. And Bart, Bart knows this mm -hmm. as well. So I think for the Dallas Cowboys, Listen, Dak is going to get his. Dak is going to throw the ball. But in order for the Dallas Cowboys to have any chance in this game, they, Ezekiel Elliott needs to have a big night tonight. He needs to take some of the pressure off Dak Prescott. And more importantly, on, that de on the defense side of the football for the Dallas Cowboys. So let me bring Lewis in to the conversation here on that thought. Lewis, give the fans the thing that they should be watching for. What do you think is the most important factor tonight in what will determine the outcome of the game? 
Yeah, I think you really just need to watch really about a five-yard area from guard to guard, five to seven-yard area, and see, and that I'm talking about from guard to guard as far as the Dallas Cowboys are concerned, and see if they're able to hold the point of attack and not have everything collapsing back into Dak Prescott's lap. If you see Indomitian Sue, if you see Vita Vea on first and second down winning the line of scrimmage to where when Dak is pulling away from center, they're basically on his heels, it's over. If it's third and six, third and seven, as Wood is referring to, and they can't stay ahead of the chains, it's over because you know what they're going to do then? Then they're going to take JPP, they're going to take Shaq Barrett, they're going to take Joe Tryon, and they're going to get into their sub fronts and they're going to go, okay, who's playing right guard? Let's run some games over this guy right here and let's come right down the pipe on Dak Prescott and make him roll out left or right and make him use that leg. Because then if they get him into that situation and they're playing from behind, it's going to be a long night for the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm afraid that's exactly what's going to happen. And, and that's what you talk about. You talk about, you know, testing his mental psyche. I remember when Brady came back from his knee injury, we always put A-gap pressures because we knew he would be afraid to step into that throw and leave that, that, that injured leg exposed. You do the same thing with, with, with Dak Prescott. I'm telling my, my defenders, don't tackle him. Jump on his back. Put your body weight on him and make him carry you and see if he's mentally ready and, and, and really recovered from that injury. I'm going to flush him out of the pocket. right? I'm going to make him run to his left the same way that he got injured. I'm going to see if he's come over that hurdle and see if he's able to push the ball down the field accurately because we know that his arm is compromised too. Look, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won their last eight games last year and they did it largely because their defense was so good. But of course... (laughs)